researcher has come to your consultancy office with the following information. She has travelled to five different parts of the UK and asked 300 people in each region the following question. Will the new student tuition fees stop people from poorer backgrounds going to university? The number of yeses and noes received are shown in the table below. The researcher is interested in whether different parts of the UK have different opinions about the topic at hand. Our first task, as always, is to identify the variables we are dealing with. The first variable is region. This is the predictor variable. It is categorical, as it takes no natural numeric order, and it has five levels. London, Coventry, Guildford, Manchester and Norwich. The other variable is the response variable. It is up to you as a statistician as to how to record this. It could be the number of people that said yes, or it could be the proportion of people who said yes. Note that if your sample sizes were different for each region, it wouldn't make sense to talk about the number of people that said yes, because 200 yeses from 1,000 is a very different response from 200 yeses from 300. For this reason, we generally take our response variable to be the proportion of people who said yes, although in this study, which is balanced, we could have used either. Now we know what variables we have and we know the researcher's question, we can formulate our null and alternative hypotheses. Our null is P1 equals P2 equals P3, etc and our alternative is not all pi are equal. Here, p1 is equal to the proportion of people who said yes in London, p2 the proportion of people who said yes in Coventry, etc. Note here we have coded our variable region with 1 equals London, 2 equals Coventry, etc. To get a feel for our data, we will carry out some exploratory analysis in the form of a side-by-side -side bar chart showing the proportion of yeses and noes in each area. To do this, we need to transfer our data into R. We will do this by typing in code rather than the usual approach of reading the CSV file. The following code gives you your table in R. Line 1 gives you a matrix with two rows and all your entries and the following two lines give you row names and column names. We can see when we run the code our table is produced. To get an idea for the numbers it would be nice to see the proportion of people in each area who said yes to the question. The following R code will produce a proportion table shown here. To see this visually we can construct side by side bar charts using the following code. The bar charts can be seen here. From this we can see there are some proportion differences in our sample. Further testing will indicate if these differences are significant in the population. To do this we need to decide what test is appropriate to carry out on our data. We are dealing with proportions and we have several samples. So, if you look at the flowchart on Learn, it can be seen that a chi-square test is the correct test to use. The following R code carries out a chi-square test. The results can be seen here. The test gives us a p-value of 0 0.0058, so there is a significant difference in the proportion of yeses based on what region respondents are from. As this is significant, we can now carry out follow-up tests to see which pairwise areas have significantly different views. To do this, we use the Marascuio procedure. The Marascuio procedure compares pairwise proportion differences to pairwise critical chi-squared values, where the critical values are equal to the following formula here. This is a chi-squared value that you gained before, where alpha is your significance level, k is the number of groups you have, p is the proportion within your group, and n is the sample size within your group. If the proportion difference value exceeds the critical value, then the difference is significant. The following R code sets up a table which shows a proportion difference alongside the critical value 
and then states whether the proportion difference is significant. When this command is run, we get the following table. This shows us that there is only one significant proportion difference, which is between P2 and P3. P2 was Coventry and P3 was Guildford. So we can go back to our researcher and say yes, there are significant differences in opinion among regions of the country, but the only one we found to be significant was between Coventry and Guildford.